Is it going? <laughs> yep. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Qul inni akhafu in asaytu rabbi adhab yawmin azim Man yusraf anhu yawma idhin faqad rahimah Wa thalika alfawzu almubin وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُوَ وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحن العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Last week we did ayat with regards to the greatness of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in سوت الأنعام and we covered his رحمة we covered his ownership of what is in the heavens and the earth we have covered his ownership of what is inside the daytime and the nighttime. Then we covered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a wali and as a fatir is samawati wal ard and that he gives rizq and he doesn't take rizq. And we covered the concept of wajib al wujud and mumkin al wujud as a means of revision. What does Fatir mean? Creator, creator. creator and originator. The originator, the creator. What is the difference between Fatir and Khaliq? Yes, so there's a, another connotation of originating and doing the process of tearing. Yes? Okay, and the meaning of wali? Protector. Sorry, what did you say? No. Wali is someone who is a close friend, who is a protector. Can also be considered a guarantor. Right? So someone who will guarantee something is also called a wali. And in general, the wali is used in the context of agreements in the case of war. So, for example, you, are, uh, you think you might get attacked by the next country, so you make an agreement with another country that in the case that that country attacks you, that they will come for your aid and for your protection. That's the context of the wali. So, in the context of Allah's... Yes. Two countries agree yes. each other will be each other. Yes. They are equal. Yes. But if I say someone is willing for another one, yes. one is superior than another. So this my my willing in means that I'm not equal to him. Maybe he's protecting me. Yes. Could well possibly be that he is in a higher position than you, either physically or financially or by other means. Yes. In any case, having a wali is beneficial. And during the time of the Quraysh and the Prophet wasallam, it was almost essential to have a wali. Because if you were without your tribe, then you were, you know, uh, open and anyone could attack you. So the, the, the tribe setup was the thing that protected you from getting attacked from people outside your people. Which is why, if you understand that, then you also understand that for the people to take shahada in that time was even more difficult. Because as soon as they took shahada, their tribe Dis, dis uh, own them, so they lost their protection. Then, on top of that, your tribe was your entire social structure, right? So you know, uh, you can just notice how when your sister came, your structure has changed totally, right? 
And so your tribe is your social structure. It is everything around you, your finances, your people that you meet with, the people that provide you physical help. And when you lose that, then you have lost your social structure. So for those early Muslims believing in Islam had not just the connotation that they got disowned by their tribe, they got disowned financially and socially and from a perspective of military strength. I think we finished with the ayah of قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنَا عَصَيْتُ رَبِّ عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ That was the last ayah that we finished with. So we start with مَنْ يُصْرَفْ عَنْهُ يَوْمَ إِذٍ فَقَدْ رَحِمَهُ وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْمُبِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that Yusraf is used in the uh, passive form, the majhul form. It is not known who is doing the sarf. And the sarf is to remove something, okay? So someone is about to go into the punishment and the punishment is moved aside from him or he himself is moved away from the punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that whoever is saved from the punishment on that day, فَقَدْ رَحِمَهُ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has had rahma on him. Now who else apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the punishment? So there is a qira'ah where it is recited مَنْ يَصْرِفْ عَنْهُ يَوْمَئِذٍ فَقَدْ رَحِمَهُ And that means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the punishment on that day and He has had mercy on that person when He removes that punishment. At the end of the day, how is the punishment removed? Primarily by the form that the person has taken iman in the dunya. Okay, Allah mentions, "Wa kuntum ala shafa hufratim min al nar." In Ali Imran, that you were on the edge. You can imagine that this is a cliff. Jahannam is like a huge bottomless pit in which the ayah comes, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that you are standing on the edge about to fall over facing the fire and Allah then has pulled you back from that and has given you Iman. So whoever is given Iman in this world, he has then on the Day of Judgment been protected from the Adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says that just that saving from the hellfire is al-fawzul mubin. He doesn't mention anything about entering Jannah at this time, but just being saved from the hellfire in itself is the clearest form of victory. So uh, Allah mentions in, um, what's the name of the uh, surah? At the end of... Furqan, right? Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, ayah number 65, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّا عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا Those people who are a description of Ibad rahman they say, O oh Allah, remove the عَذَاب of Jahannam from us. Meaning, don't let us enter this. So even asking this dua is a dua that a person should make on a regular basis. A good and easy dua to remember is Allahumma ajirna min nar Okay. Oh Allah, release us from the captivity of the hellfire. Meaning, save us from entering it in the first place. So it's a very short dua, very easy to remember and a person can easily make it at the end of their prayer. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ Now, we are discussing the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the summary I gave you, we discussed multiple sifat. The next sifat that is described is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full authority to give harm and to give benefit. He says that he is a raziq he gives food, he does not take food, right? And now he is saying 
that if some harm is about to befall you, then there is no one that can remove it but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if some good, if some good comes to you, then he is able to do all things. The famous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says to Mu'adh that I will teach you some words. And he says, Ihfadillaha yahfadka. And there's a long hadith that he narrates the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the things that's part of this is that the core piece of this famous hadith is that if the entire world gathered together to stop some harm from coming to you, then they will not be able to stop it. If Allah has written that this harm will fall on you, then they cannot stop it. And if the entire world gathers to give you some benefit and Allah has not written it for you, then they will not be able to give you that benefit. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes His complete control of any benefit and any harm that you receive. Now then this brings two benefits to the Muslim. The first benefit that he gets is as he says, and he makes in this dua, Rabbana atina, Rabbana atina, Rabbana atina. He keeps on saying, oh Allah, give me, give me, give me. Okay? And what happens is the thing that he wants very strongly doesn't come to him. He doesn't get it. A simple example, he wants a son, okay, and he doesn't get a son. And after some years, he gets a daughter, and he wanted a son. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if Allah desires something for you, there's no one in the world that can change that qadr for you. So he says that, okay, I asked for something, Allah gave me something else, there is no one else I can go to to ask but Allah. And if He is the one that is going to give me instead of what I want, then I have to accept that. Then the other benefit for the Muslim is if some harm comes to him, then he says that, فَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has complete authority to remove this from me. We look in Gaza right now and uh, we look at the situation of the Palestinians and we say that their situation is that they are being killed on a daily basis. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desired, then all of that would stop. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desired, then the Muslims would be the ones in authority. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desired, then the Muslim countries would be strong enough to actually fight back and do something about it. But the situation is that they are being killed, right? So then one of the things that the Muslim then comes across and says that this is Qadr, that the person who was due to be killed had to be killed on that day on that time, in that fashion, and the hands of the enemy in exactly this fashion, right? If the whole world joined together in trying to stop it, then that person would still die in that place, in that time, in that fashion, in that exact same way. So then there becomes some kind of calmness in the heart that this is a result of what would happen anyway. Very, very interesting ayah in Surah Al-Hadid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَبْرَأَهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ what's, what's interesting is the next ayah. لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ So something afflicts you, then know that this is something that was written in the kitab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it happened. 
okay? So that you don't become too sorrowful over what has afflicted you and you don't become too happy over what he gives you, okay? So it means that then the insan, the Muslim becomes balanced. When something happens to him, he doesn't become depressed. And something good happens to him, he doesn't become euphoric. He remains balanced. Something good happens, he gets happy, but he doesn't cross the bounds. Something bad happens, he becomes sad, but he doesn't cross the bounds and become depressed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us the complete authority over benefit and harm that he has. وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرِ Qahir, in your notes, you will write down Al-Ghalib. <coughs> okay, Al-Qahir is Al-Ghalib and it has the additional meaning that he is the one that prevents harm coming to you. Okay, Al-Ghalib is the one who overcomes, right? If you go to, who's been to Spain? Anyone been to Spain? I had the pleasure of uh, attending a conference in Spain. Um, this is like seven, eight years ago now. And I specifically went to Cordoba and uh, Granada to see the Sha'ir of Islam, right? Mm -hmm. To see the great palaces and the mosques, the Grand Mosque of Cordoba. And uh, to this day, you will find on the largest mosque there that it is written La Ghaliba illallah, which is very interesting because the Muslims got overpowered. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that everything can be overcome, but Allah Himself cannot be overcome. And that is there to this day, even though that happened, you know almost 600 years ago that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has safeguarded that as a symbol of his authority that Allah only protects you when you do your covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you lose your covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he lets you be crushed like the Muslims in Spain were crushed like the Muslims in India were crushed so that covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate connection that receives the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we, you know, because uh, Gaza is continuously on my mind, I will always have it in my talks and even every khutbah is now half about Gaza, half about something else. Why is the Muslims of Gaza in this situation? This exact situation, go back exactly a hundred years. Right? And read history of what did the Muslims do with their rulers. And what you find is that the Muslims themselves betrayed their own rulers to get the protection of the British and the French. And then they said, okay, we will protect you from the bad Ottomans. They're Turks, you're Arab. So straight away they created this asabiyya between them. Instead of them being connected by Islam, they said, you are Arab, how can you be ruled by Turks? Non-Arabs will rule you, how is this possible? We will protect you, we will give you walaya. And then the foolish Arab leaders, what did they say? That sounds like a good deal, let's take that. And so when they took that, they left the habl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now for the next hundred years, the Muslims have been punished as a result of that. We don't have any system of khilafah. And when anyone attacks us, what can we do? Nothing at all. We have no political, financial, military strength whatsoever. So... Our reason where hundreds of people are getting killed today goes back a hundred years. And until and unless we realize this ayah where Allah says, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ This fawqa is not physically on top. 
when you say that the ruler is on top of his subjects, it doesn't mean that he's standing on top of them. It means that he has authority over his people. So when Allah says, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ Then he is the one that is غَالِبْ over his ibad. This is very easy to understand. وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ Al-Hakim, what does it mean? Wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise. The definition of hikmah Yeah, I understand that. Hakim comes from hikmah, but what does hikmah mean? Wisdom. Yeah, but how do you what's the definition of wisdom? Good. Good, good. If you don't know this, write it down in your notebooks. Wadu shay'i fi mahallihi. Wadu shay'i to put its thing in its place. A very simple example, honey is good for you. Right? You got an infection, you got a cold, you took honey, you got better. If you're diabetic, honey is bad for you. Simple example, right? So you cannot give honey to a diabetic. If someone says, doctor, you're a very good doctor, give me honey, and he will say, but you're diabetic, I can't give you Honey, right? So this is hikmah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he is al-hakim, though he is al-qahir, which is one of his names of jalal, of his azama, his majesty, that he overcomes, his authority. He says that in using his authority, the qaida is his hikmah. He doesn't overcome you in the sense that he crushes you, right? And then he is also Al-Khabir, that he knows exactly what are your given circumstances, what are your strengths, your weaknesses, and then he gives you the examination and the conditions exactly according to that. Well, any, any questions so far? Yes. Yes, yes. Hakim is the, uh, there's two words for doctor, right, in Arabic language. There's one Hakim and then there's one Tabib, right? And the word Hakim is the person who gives medications in its place. So he uses the right medication for the right thing, okay? And this is exactly the art of medicine, to be giving the right medication in the right place. قُلْ أَيُّ شَيْءٍ أَكْبَرُ شَهَادَةً to understand this ayah, you have to understand that there is a question in this place that has not been mentioned. The Mufassirun say that the question that is being asked is, the Quraysh came to the Prophet ﷺ and said that you claim to be a prophet, you claim you have a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is your witness that you are a prophet? The Yahud and the Nasara who had prophets before you, they are saying that they don't believe in you. So bring forth your witness. You know, a prophet needs to have a witness, right? Someone who can come and say that he should be a prophet. Similar to when we said, وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ مَلَكٍ And they said, why did not an angel be sent down with him? So Allah answers this question. You alright? You're feeling hot? <laughs> you can ask them to put the AC on. قُلْ أَيُّ شَيْءٍ أَكْبَرُ شَهَادَةٍ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what thing will be a greater witness? And he says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Say to them, what will be a greater witness? He then answers it himself. He says, قُلِ Meaning Allah himself is a witness that the Prophet ﷺ is a prophet. Now here in, I'm going to ask you a question because mashallah you're all very intellectual and intelligent and in attending every week. No, I, I'm not joking. <laughs> I, uh, I gave two lectures in the weekend. And um, I consider you guys 
pay more attention than other places that I go to. And that's because you are dealing with tafsir every week and you're starting to get used to my style. And when I talk to you guys, I, I can get the sense you are processing, you are thinking. So let me ask you a question. The Prophet is claiming that he is a Prophet. And then he is saying that Allah is my witness. How is he saying it? He is saying that here is the ayah. Allah is saying that I am the witness, that I am the Prophet. Can you see a problem? Hmm? You got the problem? Yes. To confess to him that Allah, or maybe someone who even don't know Allah. Okay, this can be two issues that someone does not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before this ayah, we've had two pages where Allah has described himself, right? As being the Khaliq, the Father, the Wali, Al Hakim, Al Khabir, Al Sami, Al Adi. So we've got all, all these sifat, 10 or 15 sifat we have done. So then the question is that here, Allah is saying that he is the witness. And he is saying he is the witness through revealing the Qur'an to the Prophet wasallam, and they are not believing in him as a prophet. So the answer comes in two different forms. One is Allah is stating he is the witness in the Qur'an because if Allah sends down a voice from the heavens, that I am the witness for the Prophet wasallam, then the end result is that this will be a kind of miracle after which if a person does not believe, he has to be destroyed. Got it? Yeah. So this kind of thing cannot be revealed. Then what's the alternative? That it has to come down to the Prophet wasallam via Jibreel via in the Quran. Okay. Then how is that in itself a proof? Because we know that the Qur'an itself was a hujjah through its use of grammar. That the Arab themselves could not produce anything like it. So they knew themselves that the Qur'an is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah says, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illahu, Allah bears witness that he himself is la ilaha illahu. Who was he telling? He was telling the mushrikeen. I am bear witnessing that I am one. And now he says, I am bearing witness that verily you are the prophet and who is a bigger witness than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. The second reason that this makes sense is here the Prophet wasallam is not saying, I'm a prophet. Okay? Someone says, uh, are you married? And you say, yes, I'm married. And he said, well, you have to prove it. He said, you can go ask my wife. If you don't believe me, go and ask my wife. If you don't believe that, go and see the marriage certificate. So the Prophet is saying, if you don't believe that I am a prophet, وسلم, then Go ask Allah who has sent me down. He himself is saying he is the biggest witness. Then he goes on to say, Shaheedun bayni wa baynakum. He is a witness between you and me. وَأُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ لِأُنذِرَكُمْ بِهِ وَمَنْ بَلَغْ And this Qur'an has been revealed unto me. لِأُنذِرَكُمْ the Prophet ﷺ has been sent as a Nadir and a Bashir. That is the two components of a Prophet. It's always a Nadir, always a Bashir. Here he does not mention Bashara. He only mentions Indar. He only mentions warning. Why is this? The reason this is because this Surah is later Makki Surah. In the earlier Makki surahs, Allah would give warning and glad tidings. Later Makki surah, because they're not believing year after year after year, the warning now is more important. Glad tidings are not required. They need fear to listen. لِأُنذِرَكُمْ bihi bihi means the Qur'an. وَمَمْ بَلَغْ This means 
whoever has reached the Quran or the Quran has reached that person. Okay? Was I there or you were there at the time it was being revealed? The answer is no. But as soon as the Quran has reached us, then automatically we have been warned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people have taken this ayah as a proof that only those people for whom some knowledge of the religion reaches will be accounted to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a viewpoint of some people. The majority viewpoint I have already told you before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take into account everyone because the basic sense is that the person should have Iman in one God. That is what they will be accounted for. Right? The other meaning of Waman Balagh is the one who has reached Bulugha. That he has reached puberty. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns him as well. So whoever has reached puberty will be taken into account. The first tafsir is the majority tafsir and probably closest to being the correct tafsir. أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَشْهَدُونَ أَنَّ مَعَ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً أُخْرَى This is like قُلْ يَا يُوَالْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَبْدُونَ مَا عَبْدُ وَلَا أَنَا عَبْدُ مَا عَبْدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَبْدُونَ مَا عَبْدُ Okay, this is now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeating it and making it stronger. أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَشْهَدُونَ أَنَّ مَعَ اللَّهِ أَهْرِ أَنْ أُخْرَى Do you make a witness that there is another ilah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? قُلْ لَا أَشْهَدْ Say, I am not a witness to this. Okay, I'll come back to this. I'll finish the ayah and then I'll come back to this. قُلْ إِنَّمَا هُوَ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدْ Say that there is only one God. وَإِنَّنِي بَرِيءٌ مِّمَّا تُشْرِكُونَ Again a repetition. I am innocent of the shirk that you do. This is an extreme cut-off. In terms of balagha, you cannot go beyond this in expressing that you don't want to do any shirk that they are doing. Okay? So, the Prophet wasallam is being taught here a lesson because he is being told قُلْ How many times has قُلْ come here? One, two, three, four times in one ayah. Right? It's quite a unique ayah in that قُلْ comes four times that he is being taught and we are being taught that we don't have anything at all to do with shirk. And an example of this will come later in the surah when we look at Ibrahim alayhi salam in how he is teaching his people when he says, oh look at the sun, it must be my God. Then he says, oh, look at the moon, it must be my God. And then he says, oh, look at the star, it must be my God, right? But in fact, what he is actually teaching his people is that shirk makes no logical sense at all and that I have nothing to do with shirk. And in fact, what he went ahead and did was actually break their idols physically, right? So this surah, at the beginning I told you, is all khitab to the mushrikeen. And it requires breaking down of shirk. Let's do a couple of more ayat and we'll stop inshallah. Alladina atinahum al kitaba ya'adifunahu kama ya'adifuna abana'ahum. Those who have been given the kitab, who are the Yahud and the Nasara, ya'adifunahu, they know him. Ya'arifunahu, meaning they know his signs, they recognize him. Who do they recognize? They recognize the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kama ya'arifuna abna'ahum, like they recognize their sons. There is a narration that is mentioned in the books of tafsir that Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu went and spoke to one of the leaders of the Yahud and said to him, do you recognize the Prophet ﷺ? They said, by Allah, we recognize them like we recognize our sons. Exactly how it's mentioned in the Quran. 
In one, it is also mentioned that they say that we don't know what our woman did. It's possible that what they're trying to say is there's a chance that the child I have is not even my child because I don't know what my woman did. Okay? But I know that this is the Prophet. So they were more certain that this is the Prophet than they were certain about their own children. Okay? And so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bearing witness that even though they are saying they don't recognize him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that yes, they do know about him. And the example I've given you many times before is Abdullah bin Salam, who was a leader of the Yahud and one of their ulama. He is uh, in history of the ulama of the Yahud who believed in Muhammad وسلم, and stated that all the signs that you have are mentioned in our books. Another example that you will know about is Salman al-Farsi, who uh, was in the lands of Persia, became a Christian, lived amongst the, the monks, and he uh, learned the, uh, the Bible. And then he realized that in here is a mark of a coming prophet. And so he learned what those marks were. He realized that this is person is going to come to Medina. He went in there, and then he waited and waited and waited. It is said that Salman al-Farsi lived until he was 300 years old. Okay? So that he lived much more than the average human being of their time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him forth like that, so that he was a witness of Bani Israel that who has read their books, and is waiting for a prophet and then took Iman in that prophet. There is a very interesting ayah. Um, someone sent me a video about um, Norman Falkenstein. And Norman Falkenstein breaks down the Zionist agenda. And so someone commented in a, in a group that was on that it's interesting that here is a Jew who is proving the Zionist agenda as being incorrect. So I actually posted this ayah in the group. Say, say this is from Allah and you have disbelieved in it. And a witness from Bani Israel has borne witness that this Quran is the likeness of the Torah and the Injil. فَآمَنَا He took Iman. وَاسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ You didn't take Iman. So Allah brings forth from each nation a people or a person who will bear witness on the truth from their own people. And another example of this is the رَجُلُ mu'min that is mentioned in Ghafir. وَقَالَ رَجُلُ الْمُؤْمِنُ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَ that from the people of Fir'aun, not from Bani Israel, from the people of Fir'aun, Fir'aun's people were different from Bani Israel. They conquered Bani Israel, right? They came from outside and they conquered them. Then a man from Fir'aun's people bore witness on the Iman of Musa alayhi salam. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proves that those people recognize the Prophet ﷺ like they know their children. This is a copy of ayah number 12 where he mentioned the tafsir of this, where I mentioned that alladina khasiru anfusahum is mubtada and fahum la yu'minun is khabar, which means those who believe have resulted in their destruction. Let's stop here insha'Allah because I think starting from the next uh, next time will make more sense. We have a break for two weeks and insha'Allah we will start again on the 8th of January insha'Allah. Summer holiday. <laughs>